bailing out three guys now who are in heaps of trouble. As I'm swimming to the fourth guy, it goes through your mind every time doing a rescue without a board or a tube. It can be a struggle. They can try to drown you. It's trying to stay cool and trust your own ability. Where's Maxi? Where's Maxi? Those three were standing with their arms up <laughs> and waving for help while they were standing. Go straight in, brother. Pretty much that was panic in its in its finest form. They could have gone a couple of metres either way, but they panicked lost their cool and, and pretty much almost drowned. One, the guy at the back was genuinely in trouble. Like, he needed help and the three were just um, standing there with their arms up waving for help. It, it doesn't matter how good a swimmer you are or how bad you are, just don't panic. The rule of thumb is just stay calm and stay alive. Mate, that was horrendous, end. Had to fully ditch the board to pull up something like drowning. Biggest fear as a lifeguard would have to be losing a kid while on duty, and it's all your fault. I would hate someone to die while I'm working. I remember it happening years ago, and it's a horrible, horrible feeling. I'm not scared of rats. I'm not scared of spiders. I'm scared of the the ultimate swell. Every lifeguard has their own individual fears, but there's one thing that we're all afraid of. Swimmers think about it, surfers definitely think about it. And us lifeguards always have that little bit of a worry every time we go in the water. The last shark attack at Bondi was only a couple of years ago, and it was a great white. You know, as lifeguards, we really are intrigued by those creatures in the water and really want to see them. Lead the charge. <laughs> oh, leading that. To oh, a leader. Right. To a lead. Look at him. Jump <laughs> board, guys. In the preseason, we went down to Port Lincoln in South Australia to conquer all our fears and swim with the man eaters, the great whites. Hey, mate, how are you doing? Yeah, good. Sam. Nice to meet you. Oh! So scared hey, right hey, now. Hey, don't worry. Hey, you look, look at the cage. This cage is massive. There are holes in the thing. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been so scared in my whole life. I didn't think it was going to be this daunting, but now we're starting to move. It's a reality that we're going to see some sharks. I'm terrified. I was a pro surf for about 10 years. During that time, I saw maybe 20 odd sharks. Without a doubt, it's a surfer's greatest fear. I don't know if I can get in the cage. <laughs> oh, what am I doing? So much pressure for Kerbox to do this. If he pulls out now, he'll never hear the end of it. Oh. <gasps> Took around two hours to get out to the Neptune Islands where the Great Whites were. And yeah, once we got out there, we just anchored up and bowled up. Looks tasty. Now have a look over the side. Yes, it's just seeing me. We see it pumping over. Oh. You right, Rocky? Look at this maniac over here. There's one down deep, he's a little bit shy. Might be enough to bring him up, you know. Thrash and seal, something injured, bit of noise. Kerbox hasn't moved an inch in the last half an hour. You know, he can't stop looking at the water. <laughs> what have I got myself in for here? I was kind of hoping we didn't get to see one, actually. <laughs> that all soon changed. Oh, oh, my the size of the thing. Oh, my God, man, that was nuts. Look at us now. There is a massive great white under the boat. He's huge. 
I've never seen anything like it. It was nearly as white as a car. Yeah, shocky, shocky, shocky. As soon as I seen it, I was just so psyched to get in there. But I think the older boys were a bit more scared than me and Maxie. What about we got to get in there, box? Oh, <laughs> this is about four and a half metres. I can't, <laughs> I can't go in. Kerr box has come this far. I hope you can take the final step and get down in the cage. Ready to go, boys? Yeah, ready. Yep, yeah, a couple it. of sharks cruising around. The biggest yeah, one would be close on five metres. How would you feel if that showed up at Bondi? I was trying to act brave in front of the boys because I didn't want to let them know I was petrified. I kind of think they already knew that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Don't miss the cage box. We're not going in over there. <laughs> Yeah, everyone was nervous, but for me, it was pretty much my greatest fear. I remember getting in, I couldn't feel my legs, and I was getting so anxious and so uptight in there. I had a bit of a spew in the regulator. <laughs> I was shit myself. You just can't believe how big these things are. It's a real mix of emotions. You're really excited, but you're really nervous and scared too. I just thought to myself, what am I doing in this cage? Like, I'm out of here. I, I wanted to get out right there and then, but unfortunately I couldn't let Hoppo right behind me. Originally I wanted to touch the shark as it sort of went past, but uh, that, that thought moved from my mind pretty quickly when we were in the water and saw the, saw the beast live in action. We were down there for 60, 75 minutes, and it was intense, but it was beautiful, and I'll never, ever forget it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that was mental. That was real hard. All the time, mate, all the time. Something that I hopefully never experience when I'm not in a cage, but, mate, had a ball, unreal. What have I learned about great whites? Stay as far away as you can from their mouth. Their teeth look razor sharp. <laughs> the whole idea to go there was trying to cure my fear of sharks, especially being involved here with work. But I'm oh, the complete opposite now. I just know they're in the ocean now, and it's made me worse. <laughs> Just around the corner from Bondi at Bronte, we've been called for a dangerous threat. A big shark in the pool. We've got a predator amongst us. I've got to get it out. I'm going to go down and I'm going to remove the shark. I'm a shark hunter. It's alive. This is a rescue mission, everyone. Oh, what, we, no, I'm what we're here for. Oh, we, my God. Lifeguards don't just save lives, all right? That's not just humans. We help the animals too, you know? Yeah, he's an oddball, Harry. He's the, um, you know, he can talk to the kids on the same level. He's, he's pretty out there. When I dove under and seen the shark, he could have dived straight into my hairstyle. <laughs> I could tell that everyone started to actually enjoy what I was up to. You know, I went from that entertainer to the shark hunter, from the shark hunter to the tadpole catcher. There's a baby wobby gone. It wasn't known as a man-eater. Yeah, if it had been any smaller, it would have probably slipped through the net. Oh, no! We've got to put him back! No, He's got to go home. Say goodbye, everyone! No. Oh, no. There he goes. Oh. Oh. Rescued many people, but never rescued a shark, so it's great. We've got a compound fracture in the bowl. Yeah! 
Sorry, mate. I hate thieves down here, buddy. We hate them. Why? Go, go, go. <laughs> Some people respond to being rescued in ways you just never imagined. <laughs> Sixteen-year-old Caitlin has been found face down in the water in between the northern set of flags. Are you hear me, Caitlin? Caitlin.